Hello, this is Derek again. Good morning. Today I would like to discuss a topic that I, I saw in the iNews on the internet this morning. It dealt with the emancipation of slaves in America. So I thought it, I thought it was necessary for me to make a, a few comments about it. So I've written an article as usual to um, elaborate on my concerns. But before I get into that, I'd like to say first and foremost that slavery in the Americas, whether it's in the USA or in the Caribbean, was similar. The, the slaves were treated the same. They were beaten. They were housed like animals. They were treated like animals and they were thought to be animals, non-human. This is internationally known. This is history. There were some whites, not only in Britain, but other parts of the world who had a religious background. Now, we have read about in our history that they had these religious pilgrims who went around to, to save the savages as they saw them, because the white man always felt he was civilized and the non-whites were savages. So wherever the colonizers went, whether they were Spanish, British, Dutch, or French, wherever those colonizers went, they saw the local indigenous peoples as savages that needed to be safe, safe from some whatever they thought they were. They thought religion, their religion, which is basically Christianity, they thought religion that this, that Christianity they were bringing there had to go hand in hand with occupation and subjugation. So the, the state or the kings of those colonizers, whether it's the king of Spain or France or Britain, the king used the, 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 the pilgrims or those who were spreading religion, the Christianity, they used them as the surrogates to, to indoctrinate the, the locals, the indigenous peoples that they call savages. We must not only occupy the lands, but we must teach them religion. We must teach them our language. So in order for them to be incorporated into the empire, they had to learn to speak the language, whether it was English, French, or Spanish, or Dutch. And they also had to be indoctrinated and confirmed to Christianity. So the church was used hand in hand with the state to indoctrinate slaves or all indigenous peoples, conquered peoples, wherever the empire went. So in going back to the slaves per se, some of these pilgrims came up with the idea that it was not Christian-like to have humans in bondage, to have slaves in bondage. Uh, they felt it was unchristian to treat these people or these savages who needed saving. It was unchristian like to treat these savages after you have saved them inhumanely. So in order for them to satisfy their own guilty conscience, they had to have the slaves freed. Because you cannot have a slave who is a slave and still be a Christian. How can you reach them to keep them to ensure that they, be, they stay um, true to the faith? You cannot be a true Christian, practicing Christian, and at the same time serve on the plantation, being beaten and flogged as a slave and non-human. That does not go hand in hand with the idea of Christianity. So they felt in order to have achieve total indoctrination and the salvation of these slaves, they had to first have them freed. But they were unconcerned that when these slaves were freed, what would they do after they got the freedom? So they were focusing on emancipation first. So emancipation basically means that this slave master or the owner of those slaves had no more legal right of control over you. You are now free from that ownership. In other words, you don't have to have a pass or a document that says, I belong to John or James. I'm a product or I'm an asset or I'm a slave of John and James. You are now a free man and woman. But now that you had your freedom, you had no job. You had no money, and most of those slaves were illiterate because under the slave system, everywhere over the world, slaves were not allowed to read and write because they know when you become literate, when you can learn to read and write, you learn how to think, and they will start questioning. And when you start thinking and questioning things for yourself, you will become a threat to the owner or the slave master. So to avoid all those problems, they felt, no, we cannot teach these slaves to read and write as we will create a, a monster. So all those centuries of those slaves were under subserv subserviency. They were prevented from reading and writing. A few, very few, were able to do so secretly 
with the help of the pilgrims, this re so-called religious pilgrims, they kept one and two away, one or two that showed promise that they can trust, and they hide them secretly and they teach them the Bible. That is all their thoughts on how to read the Bible. Some of them became so bloody good at, at reading the Bible that they studied it by root, and they can spout and repeat the verses like, oh, that's why so many black, beca black sayers became priests and pastors after slavery, because that is what they were taught, the Bible. And most of the time, they didn't know what they were reading. They just studied the Bible by rote and interpreted it according to what the pilgrims tell. The wise man said, this is how it should be interpreted. And so this is how they, this is what they, they said. They repeated what they were told. This verse should be interpreted in this fashion. So they did the same. That's why today you have that type of situation. Blacks leaning towards Christianity. Blacks are so hooked on the Jesus and the Christianity that they become mentally enslaved because that is how they were indoctrinated after having been totally stripped of the cultural background, the language and the history, totally stripped. They had to take on a new identity. And the children who were brought up under slavery with this new identity. So now we've lost all of our ancestral history, our ancestral languages, and our ancestral religions, if they practice any. And we now are our products of the white man European Christianity and subsequently the Arab Islam, which came also as another slave slave ownership problem because when Islam was being spread, they too used slaves, they too indoctrinated them on the Islam because if you are an Arab, you automatically is an is, is a is an, a Muslim because Islam is a part of the Arab world. So if you were an Arab slave master, your slaves had to be had to learn um, Islam. It was necessary. They had to learn to speak Arabic, that too. So you have Africa, certain parts of Africa, you have blacks speaking Arabic and remote and some and are Muslims. That is how you have in Africa, some African countries, they are Christians and they are Muslims. All of those religions were imported to Africa. The languages were imported, the religion was imported. French, Dutch, Spanish, and English were not a part of African culture historically. All of those are imports to Africa. Islam and Christianity was never part of African culture. Those were imported to Africa. So we have black Africa is not really true Africa today because of that colonization, indoctrination, history that we passed through. That is why today we have these problems with Europe. There are a lot of the African colonies, former colonies now, they don't, they don't look to the, their own country for improvement. They want to go to Europe because they have been trained to see Europe as El Dorado. See Europe as the place where you can become educated, where you have opportunities for advancement. So that's how the black Africans see Europe. Whenever he has a problem at home in terms of employment and political problems or ethnic problems, he tries to escape to Europe, whether it's to France or whether it's to Spain or Germany, wherever because this is his cultural experience. The white man came and he told them that back to his, in his country, there's milk and honey there. And if you can get a chance to go back to the white man's country, you will experience this and your life will be better. So this is the mentality that has been perpetrated by the whites and it's, it, it exists even today. Now I have, a, I have digressed a bit, but that is basically what the black slaves in America and the Caribbean experienced. We were indoctrinated by the European. We had to speak their language. We had to use their names. But the names that we have, all the blacks wh whose ancestors were slaves had to adopt the slave master's name. You see, Griffith and Mackenzie and O'Donoghue and Mary and Mavis and all of those are European names. We don't know our ancestral names, period. We don't even know what part of Africa we were brought from. In America, they are able to trace some of their ancestral background. But in the Caribbean, we never had that opportunity of documentation. So we in the Caribbean and possibly in South and Latin America, they don't have that ancestral history paper, paper trail whereby they can go back and look at the ancestral past and see where their ancestors came from. And that is unfortunate. But that is the situation today. So like I said earlier, I've written this article voicing my views on the emancipation in America, and I will also post it along with this video on my web uh, Facebook page. So without any further ado, uh, this is the end of this, this video.
And I'd like everything else, I would like you to keep informed and send me your comments if you feel inclined to. And remember, I am Black Watch. I keep my eyes on the prize. I keep informed and I keep abreast of what is happening at home and abroad. Bye for now.